I would argue that INFPs have a harder time getting over relationships than most other types because of our sensitivity, because of our extroverted intuition. So we're always thinking of the possibilities. Um, with past relationships, we can tend to wonder and ruminate on what could have happened if X or Y was different. You know, if if that event hadn't happened, would we still be together? If I hadn't acted in this certain way, could the relationship have continued to grow or would it have, you know, come crashing down like it did? These are all things that we have to understand as we look at the past as INFPs is we're going to use that extroverted intuition as we analyze the past along with our SI. So our SI is our memories and our recollection of our sensory input from the past. And so we INFPs tend to learn from our past mistakes. But a lot of times, you know, we have so much optimism and so much idealism for people in general that we get let down and we, and we get burned by people. And this is a harder problem for us earlier in life because we don't have that experience. We don't know necessarily what we want and we tend to, you know, I mean, honestly, a lot of INFPs from what I've read online, from personal experiences, like we're not the ones to typically start up relationships. A lot of times we're the ones who are pursued by others and we can feel really special and this can feel like an amazing thing. And so when we get let down and the relationship doesn't work out, it's extra devastating. So one of the things that I want to talk about in particular with um, INFPs and getting over the one who got away. So that term, the one who got away, let's think about it. So first of all, is it the one for you? Because it might not be just one person. It might be maybe a few people or, or maybe you haven't met the one who got away yet. Or maybe you won't have one that, that will get away. But we're talking about one person here. And if we're referring to a person as the one who got away, we're giving them a lot of power right off the bat by calling them the one. So this person it, we've designated in our minds has some sort of special place that um, places them above other relationships in our mind for some reason. We really have to think about what's the reason why this person is, why am I longing for this person? What was different about this person? Was there a life situation that was going on? Was it a, was it a period of my life? Was it a period of your life that was unique? Or were you going through some things and this person really showed you that you were special? Were you struggling with self-esteem and this person came into your life and really boosted you up? You know, these are all things because when, when we have situations like this where we're in need of something, and we crave something and somebody comes along and they give it to us, that makes it feel extra special. And that type of thing can lead to us defining somebody as the one who got away, even though maybe they're not really the one that got away or they don't deserve to be called that. And when we say the one that got away, so we gotta be careful with got away because I know we can idealize past relationships and, and kind of what our idealization looks like is we will, we will amplify the good traits of a person. We will really draw, and, draw in and hone on those traits, kind of like holding a magnifying glass up to them and being like, wow, look at how great they are. Look how much love and attention they're showing me. Look how similar they are to me. Look, look how many similar interests we have, you know? But we, we take all the negative traits and we kind of say, well, you know, that's just them or may, maybe that'll change or, or maybe, maybe I can change them, which, you know, that's ridiculous right there. But we, we keep these thoughts and, and we tend to put the negative aspects to the side. And because we amplify these great traits, we're not actually falling in love with the person or we're not infatuated with the real person. What we're doing is we're infatuated with this smoke screen that we've created. So we have like a real person and we have us, the other real person, and we have this idealization that happens somewhere in the middle and it's almost like a smoke screen. And so we have all these positive traits that resist right here, that exist right here and all the negative traits are just, you know, they fluttered out the window and we've fallen in love with this smoke screen and we buy into it because we want to. It feels good to buy into the smoke screen. It feels good to 
love somebody and to find somebody, a kindred spirit in this world. As INFPs, we feel that sort of mystical draw toward the humanistic nature of things and, and what could be. And when we find a, a person that can match us or can at least provide the needs that we, that we need at the time, it, it feels incredible. And a lot of times when that happens, it's intense and it can just feel intoxicating. And so intoxicating, that's a big thing that I wanna talk about. So with the one who got away, why are they the one that got away? Is it because they made you feel amazing? Because relationships and love aren't about feeling amazing. Relationships aren't drugs. Relationships aren't an escape. They can be, but what happens is if they're, if they're those things, they will come crashing down. It's all temporary. It's all temporary. The infatuation feels so good. It feels like love, especially if we don't know what love is. It feels like love because it feels like acceptance. It feels comfortable. It feels pleasurable. It feels warm. It feels like a big hug, right? It's like, oh, finally, finally, finally. But infatuation, like all drugs, wears off. And so if we look at a relationship that is based in infatuation, usually it starts up here. So if we had a graph, you know, the, the excitement and the pleasure levels up here, and then it quickly goes like this. And so over the course of maybe some months or some years, you'll look back at the relationship and think, well, wait a minute, why were all the good times at the beginning and then it was all downhill from there? You know, a real relationship is more like this. It starts lower and you get to know somebody and it wavers and it hopefully grows over time until, you know, years and years and years and years pass until you're way up here, you know? And, and yes, it ebbs and flows. It's not gonna be a, a perfect straight line up, but it's not gonna be like this. I mean, that's a huge difference. The contrast between those two like graph shapes is a big deal. I mean, so you can really distinguish between infatuation and love just by looking at the intensity and the shape of the, the direction of the relationship as you analyze it in retrospect. So when you're looking at it now, was that person infatuation? Was that person love? Was it both? So a lot of times, you know, we can be infatuated with somebody and when that infatuation and that initial high, uh, that, that honeymoon stage or whatever you want to call it wears off, we do have love for somebody because we've spent a lot of time around them. And so we, we care for them, you know, but with love, it's, love is a word. It's, I mean, I know that's obvious, but love is like, I love you. So if I say I love you to somebody, they can understand that I love them. But real, I can say anything to anybody. I could go up to somebody and say, the sky is purple. And they'll be like, no, it's not. But it's just words, right? I mean, words are just literally just, um, you know, sound waves coming out of my mouth that you happen to be able to hear. Love is an action. So telling somebody that we love somebody and expressing our undying devotion to them is all words. And yes, we have meaning and we have feeling behind it. But love is an action. And the words are just to supplement it on the side. It's a reminder. It's just a, a reassurance. Like, I love you. I love you too. Of course you love me because you've been doing these things for me. Now with the one who got away, we have to ask ourselves, was that the case? Did they show me love? When they had all those words and, and, they, and they professed that we were gonna be together or you were gonna be together with them forever, did they mean it? I mean, they mean it by showing it. That's how you, that's how you know that somebody means something is that they display it. And so with love, love is patience. Love is understanding. Love is trust and love is mutual respect. If you don't have those things, and what kind of relationship is that? It's not healthy, you know? And so with the one that got away, maybe, maybe they didn't get away, or maybe it was good that they got away. You know, even though it doesn't feel like it, sometimes in life it's like, 
you know, I, and, you know, as INFPs, we, we feel so hardly, but the feelings don't necessarily mean that it's the truth. And, and you know that. I mean, I know that. You know, it's like sometimes we, we feel things so strongly, like with our FI. But then like, so, you know, something can come along and then suddenly it's like we go from like a sad state to a happy state. It's like things are constantly changing for us and, we, and our understanding of the world is fluctuating. And so we have to think about that, you know. You know, the one that got away, it can be hard to separate from somebody like that when we, we're entangled with their friends, you know. So a lot of times, if we're going through a separation, we have a lot of mutual friends and stuff like that. And any time that we run into a mutual friend, it's we're constantly reminded of, of that person or that person might say something about, you know, the, the person that got away. And that's just another layer. So a lot of times establishing boundaries as INFPs is super healthy. So boundaries look like, you know, I'm not, I'm, I've decided that I'm only going to hang out with this person if they don't talk about the one that got away, or I'm going to try to avoid this person altogether. A huge thing about recovering from lost love or unrequited love is getting out there and making connections with other people. So as INFPs, we really struggle with this. And I think that we need to establish those social connections with people as much as we don't want to and as much as we're hurting when we sit around and we dwell in the loss it is it becomes worse we ruminate and it grows and it expands in our minds we need to get out there and we need to get our minds off of it because and this is not the most the sexiest answer ever but the greatest healer of relationships and getting over those things is time hands down it's time and getting through that time or navigating that is is a challenge but that's where we fill in our our time with other things so making connections with other people talk with people explain to them how you're feeling as much as that hurts as infps i know we don't like to open up to people Pick somebody, find a friend, you know, reestablish a connection with a friend that you lost touch with. Um, find some new friends on Meetup, you know, just make some sort of connection, make some sort of effort. And even if like you're not making like connections, you're not going out every weekend, like, and you haven't filled in this social void, you know, just trying helps. Just the act of like doing one thing helps because it's like a snowball effect. You do one thing. And then you feel better about yourself. So then you do two things the next time. And then after you do those two things, you feel better about yourself. And before you know it, you're starting up a new social life and you're starting to move on. 